compare the wavelengths of visible light and the wavelengths compared to the wavelengths of visible light, the wavelengths of UV lights are shorter. How do you know? Because UV lights, well I thought UV lights have more energy, so they have a higher frequency, so that's not a higher a lower wavelength. That's a good way, that's a very good way to remember it, yeah. That's a very good way to remember it. I guess this is one reason why you can get sunburns yeah. from UV light. They got all that energy in them. Okay, so it kind of looks like you kind of remember. There's that chart in the uh, in the book that has the whole electromagnetic spectrum. Yeah. It looks like you want you to kind of have the basics of that chart. And well, you could just have it in your cheat sheet, but either in your cheat sheet or memorized. So I should put it in the cheat sheet. How much cheat sheet do you get? Five and five. Huh? Okay, that's fair. There's not that many two bulk, bulky formulas here. Okay, so that's right. The, the way you reason this out is very good. This is really the best way to see that this is uh, oops, that this is uh, low wavelength. Best to see that it's high energy. So that's a good way to look at it. What is the speed of light in a medium having an index of refraction of two point three? So. on that? Meters per second. Okay, yeah, that didn't give me any trouble. Still a good habit. This is a simple problem. This is still a good habit to always label the question with the question mark. Yeah. Because there could have been a little trick about what they're asking. If you, if you focus yourself, if you force yourself to focus on the question, you can avoid those little tricks about what the question is. But, uh, but yeah, this is the exact right way to attack this problem. It's kind of a plug and chug. Uh, so what's the difference between V and C? They, they both measure speeds. What's the difference? And then V is, yeah, in some medium. And then what does N stand for? Uh, the index of refraction. Whose index of refraction? Of that light. Yeah, well, now the index of refraction is not a property of the light. Well, I, in, in a way it is. Uh, but this is the index of refraction of whatever medium you're measuring V in. Uh, yeah. that, that's worth knowing. So C is the speed of light in a vacuum. And then what this equation tells you is that the speed of light in a particular medium, V, is C divided by the index of refraction of that particular medium. So each medium is going to have its own V and its own N, and they're related by this equation. And for that matter, you were actually right, though. It's also true that different wavelengths of light will have different ends in the same medium. Okay. Sorry, you were going to say? This is like how much it's close. Yeah, exactly. Not how much it speeds it up. That is important to know. N is how much the light got slowed down. N is how much the light got slowed down. Here the light got slowed down a lot, right? It got slowed down by a factor of two. This is something that's really slowing the light down. We know that uh, air doesn't slow the light down at all hardly. It has an N of one. And water is just 1.33. So this is something that's really slowing the light down. It's going less than half of its previous speed over here. So N, N is just the ratio of the old speed to the new speed. Basically, it's just a ratio that compares the two speeds. Remember, what's the smallest that n could be? Um, one. And that's for a vacuum or for air. Because vacuums and air don't slow the light down at all. Yeah. And then anything else. So this is a good way to put it. So n is the, the factor by which c is bigger than v. n is the factor by which c is bigger than v. For example, in this case, the speed of light in the vacuum is more than twice as big as the speed of light in this medium. Okay, so if you were in a vacuum, n would be 1 because the speeds would be the same. Good, you got that.
this is it with one vibration? Does that mean it's, it's one wavelength? That's right. A vibration is a cycle, which would be a wavelength. That's good. So it, as it moves distance, so this is two meters. Meters at seven meters per second. And the frequency is the cycles per second. So it goes one cycle in two. It was two meters. So you worked that out with the units. That's good. So you're really using the techniques we've talked about there, working with the units. That's good. I gotta say, much as I like units, I was getting confused there myself. For me, in this case, it would be easier to plug in 2 is lambda and 20 is v. So what's the frequency? All right. You were really following the methods we've gone over. We've talked about how to use the, the units there. But um, I, I got to admit, I was getting confused myself there. So maybe, uh, if, even if you did it that way, it would be good to just plug into the formula here. So this is a crucial formula you're sure to need on the test. The, the way we used the units was just to prove this formula. Remember, what are the units for the frequency? Um, cycles per second. Cycles per second. And what are the units for wavelength? Um, or... Yeah, it tells you how many meters it takes to go one cycle. So what, what do you get when you multiply these meters per second? We kind of use the units to prove that this equation makes sense. But you can see the units are a little confusing because people normally think of wavelength as meters. They don't normally think of the wavelength as meters per cycle, even though that would be legitimate. So yeah, you probably would have, been, uh, more, you would have had higher confidence if you just plugged into the formula here. I think this is, this is a case where we can just go with plug and check. This is the case we can just plug in, because this is such a key formula. Um, so it's very common. Basically, what are they asking you to do? They're giving you the wavelength and asking you for the frequency. Is that it? They're giving you the wavelength and asking you for the frequency. This is a really common type of problem, and the way you do it is by plugging and chugging into this formula. Okay. That's good. That's good. It's good that you're thinking about the units. Uh, and then again, it still is a good habit to actually physically write down the question. Because what if they were asking you for, say, the angular frequency? You might easily forget that. If you force yourself to write down the question, then you can make sure that you're not uh, forgetting what they're talking about. I would need to, after I have They, um, they're conceptually a little different, but they behave exactly the same, the so exact same. You fuck you, so you have to use that like square root like 2 pi or something. Right, there actually wouldn't be a square root there. It would just be uh, yeah. like this. You're probably thinking of this formula, but we wouldn't need that formula here. So we would just use this formula. All right, I'm, I don't even know if he's really covered angular frequency lately. I'm just making the point. It's very easy for the question to be about something different than you thought. And if you force yourself to write down the question, that forces you to pick up on that when that happens. Okay. Um, for example, in optics, very often they're not asking you for the angle that you thought they were asking you for. So it's very helpful to label with a question mark the angle in the picture that they're going for. Okay, but uh, anyway, um, that, 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 uh, you, you know how to do that, solve that problem, so that's good. You drew a picture, that's good. Right. I guess we can go on.